Good morning. Welcome back to Dogwood Paper Arts. This is Angela Toma. Good to have you back with me. We are going to work on our Hortensia journal. And um, you can see that she's all bound and she has her end pages in. So this is where we get to finally put our little Missy album into a book. So that's what we're going to work on today. So I have cut my book board down. Uh, you'll want to just you, you do a little math here. I'm sorry. I am so sorry. But you measure your book width and um, height and you end up with a book board that is um, just s slightly larger than your book, about an eighth of an inch all the way around. Okay? So you add your eighth of an inch on top, eighth of an inch only on this side, and an eighth down here. So it's height plus one fourth, and it's width. Um, because of the spine, um, because of how we're going to build the spine into this, you need to do the book width, subtract a quarter of an inch, and add an eighth. And that's going to give you the correct size for this. I know that sounds weird, so book width minus one-fourth for the sp spine that we're going to put in, and you'll see why in a minute. And then add one-eighth of an inch so that we have an eighth of an inch all the way around. So you can see that mine is just about a quarter of an inch off there on the front. Well, it's actually about an eighth. You have an eighth here and then an eighth back here. And this is going to allow our book to close properly. So when we fold it up, our book will actually slip down in to the, the spine here. And then this will actually kind of come up a little bit, like books do. And ours is not completely even. I did not... Um, you know, if you want everything completely even all the way around, you, after you put it together, you need to cut it all off so that it is all the same um, across the, the front and the ends. And mine is not like that, um, just because of how I chose to do it. It, it's a lot more difficult when you want to just cut it all off at once and I didn't want to take the time to do that and I kind of like the feel of the pages being a little bit off from each other. I just think it kind of adds a little snugly warm to it maybe. So anyway, let's, anyway I cut these out and then I cut my spine piece. My spine is seven-eighths of an inch plus the six and one-fourth that we cut. Okay? All right. So, why do I have a scoreboard out, you say? Well, um, I'm going to cover my journal, but to start with, to put the outer cover on this book board. I want it to be strong enough to kind of hold this together since I'm not using fabric. If you want to use fabric, then, you know, you'll just probably put this down. <laughs> but I'm going to use artisan cardstock to make a, a sturdy cover around it. Artisan cardstock is sold at countrycraftcreations.com. It's an extremely good paper for binding journals and mini albums. 
it's strong and durable and I haven't seen a page crack yet. So let's hope for some reason it doesn't happen today, but um, I have not even heard people say that it cracks. So anyway, we're going to try it. But the reason I have it on a scoreboard is because a lot of people don't do this, but I do. I always put my spine this if I'm having to put two pieces of paper together, I always put this lo extra line right on my spine. Now the reason I do that is because I always have an extra wrap that I put on mine. So I'm not concerned about it being um, in that area. And I think it will probably be okay for this. Um, I hope. It's going to wrap over, so yes, I'm, I'm fine with that. Um, some people will put their, their spine here and then have this line on the back of the book. I don't, get, I don't usually do too much covering with the back of the book. I mean, we could do it that way if it's more comfortable. And which means that because of what we have here, the size of paper we have, uh, it, it could go there. I mean, there's not a problem with that. We're, since this is just our outer cover for both the front, back, and spine, um, we could actually put it at the back and it would be safe because we're going to cover it. So maybe we will do that. That would save a heck of a lot of paper, wouldn't it? I don't know. Let's put the two pieces together first and see what happens. So I have, I rarely do this anymore because score tape can actually come off after a few years. And why would I do that on my spine? Well, the reason I do that on my spine is because this, with the additional art glitter glue, I don't know if it works with other glues, um, becomes an extremely strong and durable um, bond. So the reason I put my 12 by 12 between here is because it fits perfectly and it holds it still while I line this one up. So let me get my art glitter glue. Make sure you shake it up. I know we don't, but it really needs to be shook up every once in a while, especially if you're going to bind a book. Put that up on my pen. Now, I'm, I had to move things around on my table here, so um, please forgive me if I get out of, out of frame. I don't intend to. Um, I had a lot of problems with my camera when I did um, the other portion of this book and I kept getting out of screen. I couldn't figure out what the heck was going on because I had to keep reaching further and further away while my camera was slipping. It was, it's on a pole at the back, a solid pole, but between the camera and that pole there are three uh, bends with a uh, ball joint on them. So those bends are like fists and they clamp down on those ball joints and you twist them really tight. And then what happens, my camera's so heavy, the ball joints start slipping and the camera was falling down, down, down. So, that was a lesson for me, I'll tell you. A lesson, a lesson. So this is just helping me line this up. I want to get that out of there before glue starts drying on my scoreboard because it's no fun to have glue in your scoreboard. And I'm going to put that off there behind me. And 
I really want something under that because this is my clean mat <laughs> and I'm trying to keep it clean. So anyway, um, I am ordering a new uh, piece for my camera to hang out on. Oh, look at that. I peeled the paper. You won't use that end. Um, so, okay, so this is where we're at now. Now the next thing I do is I have a one inch piece of something here, yeah, maybe, maybe not. Let me see. So look in my I do with it? Well, I don't have it. I can't find it. I need a one inch piece of uh, one inch. Let's see, could I do it that way? Excuse me. Okay. I'm going to just line this up in here. I'm going to give myself a line of one inch. <coughs> Excuse me. My gosh, my throat is so dry. This doesn't have to be exact. But we do want it to be even. Usually I have a one inch um, piece that I use, oh, like that. It's easier just to mark off an inch. Um, okay, one inch there, one inch there. So I like to draw a line when I'm making a book that I want to turn out really nicely. So I like to draw my line where my um, paper is going to fold up around my book. And since we're making a regular journal, I'd kind of like it to look really nice. centimeters in. Go this way. And it's pretty darn close. Yep, one inch. Okay, so that's to get us started here and to glue our pages down. Okay, now I am going to use art glitter glue to glue mine down. I gotta check up here. It's even up there and not down there. Okay. So what I'm going to, oh my board my board book my book here is about it's thick. It's a heavy duty um, board book and it is not quite an eighth but it's an over a sixteenth. So it's between a sixteenth and one eighth inch thick. It's um, it's pretty thick. Thick. They probably call it a sixteenth of an inch, or maybe maybe an eighth. I don't really know what they call it. But I get mine at um, it is almost an eighth. I get mine at scrapbook.com. 
uh, they sell it, and it's always been really good bookboard. I like it because it's solid. So, now, the thing with using this kind of glue as opposed to regular white glue is that this is going to actually leave some lines on this white paper. You know, you just can't avoid it unless you want to use um, like the PVA glue or white glue, Elmer's glue, or whatever you have that's your regular cheap glue at your store. Um, you can use that. However, oh, we could use um, a glue stick. That would probably work. Um, a, um, that would be solid and it wouldn't leave all the lines. So, I, you know, maybe we'll try that this time. Maybe we'll use the glue stick. I, um, I just want this to hold forever. You know, a hundred years. <laughs> um, I think I'll use this. I'm just going to glue it up. And uh, the reason I'm not concerned about lines on the outside of my book is because I know I'm going to put one of the Hortensia papers over the top of it. And that's going to um, that's going to cover up any um, imperfections you see in the with the glue. Now when we do the end papers, I probably will use the glue stick on the inside because I'm not going to want this glue to show through this white paper. You do want your glue to go right to the edge because if it doesn't, a little corner of your book will come up and that won't be fun. Make sure you mark the top of your book with the word top. Excuse my head if it gets in the way. Okay, I am on the line on the side and the top. Now I'm going to quickly turn this over since it is glued down. And I'm going to use my bone folder to get any air bubbles out and to get that paper glued down. Okay. Great. Okay. Now, for this next part, you are going to add um, a fourth of an inch. Let's see. Um, one fourth plus board width. Yes. So what that means is from your spine here, this is where that subtract a fourth and add an eighth came from, is right here. Here's your one fourth. Well, let's do board width first. So you use your, your, your board width here. Plus a fourth. And that will give you where you're, where you're going to put your spine. Right, a fourth. Board width plus a fourth. Yes. Okay. I always have to to make sure. I always tell people math is not my strong point. I'm I'm not a mathematician at all. <laughs> I like math. Don't get me wrong. I do like it. I'm just no good at it. Oh, 
I don't want this to be off because if it's off, then it's just not going to look right. And it's really hard to measure if it's on the wrong side of me. So let me flip it around. And there's my one-fourth down there. Normally I just put a dot in and I did a line on both of them. And, uh, okay, drawing your line. This is where our spine's gonna going to go. So let's go ahead and glue the spine in. Get that out of the way. Let me move scissors. Okay, so here's our spine. Whoops, back here. Make sure you get right near the edge. We'll have to make a fabric covered one. I do want to put, um, I have that um, rice paper I'd love to put on the cover. That was kind of my original idea, but you know, I'm kind of scared to use it. Because <laughs> I'm afraid I'll mess it up. Lots of glue, that ought to hold it, huh? And put this down on your quarter inch line right along the line. And we want these to be even. Excuse my head. There we go. I hope they're even down there. seem to be off just a little bit. I'm always off just a little bit. <laughs> it drives me nuts. Okay, flip it over. Now you can see the lines in it. So the lines did form, unfortunately, from the glue. Now, if you're using... Um, your tool here and your paper starts glossing up, just put another piece of paper over it and do this and the gloss will end up on the paper you're using, not on this one. I'm not concerned about it because I know I'm covering it. Just putting up a book width there, plus one fourth of an inch. And I am not left handed, so I'm going to have to put this hand in the way. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to put a dot right at one fourth of an inch. I'm going to do the same up here. Sorry, I have to get in your way. Right at one fourth of an inch. That one looks off, doesn't it? Hard to tell is to measure. It is it is not off. Between right under three eighths. Yep, it's fine. Go ahead and draw your line in. Here's the reason I like dots, is pencil dots, if they make a little dot in the paper, just makes a nice way to draw. <laughs> okay, now we're going to find out where that ends up on our spine, or on our the back of our book. 
I want this word top to um, <laughs> be in my memory when I put my book in. Okay, that is going to work. So let's put glue on this one. And then we'll lay it down. And then we'll go to the next step. I'm so afraid I'm going to mess up and miss something. Miss telling you something. <laughs> I'll try not to. But if you have a question, just send me an email. The way you get to my email is um, you can go to my um, channel and I think there's a way to do an email there. But if not, go to my Etsy and just send me an Etsy message. Or go to my Facebook and message me. Oh, my dogwood paper arts might not be set up for messaging. Art glitter glue dries so fast that that's why it gets um, leaves marks on the inside of your paper, on the outside of your paper. It reminds me of when I was a kid and I always liked to draw Goldilocks. She had curly hair. Right on the line. And right across your one inch line on the top. Make sure that they are evened up. All right, flip it over. And use your bone folder on it. Look how fast that picked up the... Because um, that tape was under there. So it's picking up all the dust off my table. Book dust. But we're going to cover it. Like I said, usually I put them right on the center of the spine. But this spine is pretty tiny. So it, it might not have worked. Okay. Now, this is what I do for this part, is I give myself a one inch, approximately, all the way around. We already have a one inch here and here on top and bottom. Whoops. My glue is saying, does that remind you that you should probably put me a pin in me? Okay, since we aren't using you for a little bit. So, one inch. And one inch. And it's just an approximate. It's where we're going to cut the paper. I like it when you have these nice measurements and you just put it on your rotary cutter and cut them before you even put the book on there. <laughs> Those are kind of nice that way. Sorry about my head. My hair is turning gray. Can you tell? I don't know if I can do it. I started getting eczema in my scalp. I have, it's not dandruff, it's eczema. I have eczema on my feet. I have it on my hands. I have a little bit everywhere. But, anyway, I started to get it in my hairline, um, up above my ears, and right on the top of my head. And it got so bad, every time I would 
color my hair that I uh, finally just thought, you know, I'm, I'm going to try not to color it again. With my blonde. I've always had my blonde. I think these aren't going to show. At least I don't need to erase them. Okay. Now it would be nice if I would leave this nice big piece from here to here, but I'm not going to. It'll just get in the way. Cut my lines off. across that line. Okay, let me get that out of our way. All right, now I did not set my timer. I don't know how much this is going to go over, but we will get this put together and um, we may have to stop because I was naughty and didn't start my camera and I did not check the time. But let's keep going for right now. Um, the next thing we need to do, and I have a cheater tool for this too. I love little cheater tools. Oh, where did it go? Here it is, right in the drawer. Now, I love this tool, and it always works, except for when I use the thick board. So what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to bring it out a little bit. And what doesn't work is my corner always ends up showing. Because I don't get it, leave enough for it to come around the corner. So this time I'm going to leave it that sixteenth of an inch here and here. You have to, it just depends on what size um, book board you have and how how you like your corners wrapped. I love the corners to look really slick. So I'm kind of okay. Here it is. This is the truth. This is a moment of truth. I'm really kind of anal about that with my books. And I don't know why it is. It's because a book, a journal especially, is where you're going to put your thoughts and your hopes and your prayers and um, what else are you going to put in there? I mean, you're going to, you're, it's where you can pour your heart out. And because of that, if you're looking at the corner of your book and it suddenly looks bad to you, you might not want to write in that journal anymore. It may just set you off. It might be like, <gasps> do you think that could happen? Well, I think it, it can. Because I bought a book once to journal in. And there was something wrong with it. Um, I think one of the end pages came loose. I pulled everything out of that journal. I just couldn't use it anymore. Now when you ha do it this way, you can cut straight across here. You don't have to do that angle right here. I always mess up the angle anyway. Anyway, it seemed like, um, you know, the um, end page came up and you know, really, I just couldn't use the book after that because I always felt like I had to fix it. And uh, I know now I could have fixed it, but, you know, if you buy something, you don't want to have to fix it. Now, if I buy a moleskin, oh, how do you say that? That's, <laughs> I always say it wrong. Um, if you buy one of those, 
I like to see them get used and rough and tough and tumbly. I am just working my paper so that it relaxes a little more and it takes the bend. So I'm just going to do that on all four sides. There we go. Okay. Now, are we ready? Are we ready for some glue? Blow out all the dust that's there. Okay, I'm using art glitter glue again. I am going to run right along the spine and the top of the book, on the, the whole top of the book with the glue. The reason I'm doing that is because, let me turn it this way so I can see what I'm doing. Make sure it's coming out and it's not. The reason that I do that is so that it further relaxes the paper there the moisture of the glue. Oh, come on, glue. You're going to make me revert to household glue? You know, if I revert to household glue, I may not come back to you, Art Glitter Glue. Thank you. I guess it had I guess I had to threaten it. If you're doing a much bigger book than this, you might want to use a different glue certainly easy to use a different glue. Um, the, the problem with the art glitter glue in books is that it dries so fast that, you know, with uh, the journals it's okay because you kind of want it to dry fast. Okay, starting at your centerpiece. And then walking your hand over to one side. And then walking your hand over to the other side. And run your bone folder along that edge. And take a look, make sure it looks good. I should have cleaned my bone folder. Looking good. Okay. It really is kind of confusing about making books and journals and albums and stuff is, you know, when you get to the spine area, you know, what do you do? You know, <laughs> well, you just do a lot of research and um, read a lot, get some books on books and, and actually have them where you can read them and, and turn to YouTube. It has a lot to offer. Okay, center first. Walk it to one side, and you're, you're really kind of pulling on that paper as you go.
um, you're pulling with the palms of your hands down on the bookboard. Okay. Now, so you don't forget. The important thing to do here is to turn these corners in on all four sides. And I do this as my next step. I just pull this around this way, pull it out that way, that flattens that part. And then just, if there's a little bit left over, just tuck it over so it's not up on top. And there we go, we are going to have a nice covered corner. Let's do the next one. I'm just going to go right around the corner. You might be able to see a little tab there. I pull that, flatten that tab down. Push this one over the edge. Push it over the edge. Because you want it flat there. There's a little glue under there, so it's a little bit... The paper's a little weak from being glued. And I like to do all four corners, so I don't forget at this point. So just walk it around. Pull that out. That flattens this little triangle here. Flatten the one on top. There we go. Okay, we are good. We are good, aren't we? Okay. All right, let's do it again. Oh, we've got too much glue over there. If you notice you have too much glue somewhere, just go ahead and squish it back. Clean up the corners. Don't rub too hard. Okay, that's okay. That makes a nice corner there. It's not perfect, but I like it. I like it. It works good. I'd rather have that than have it showing. going to do this once again. By taking care of these little corner, uh, little tiny flaps, extra flaps, right away, you're not, um, you can keep working on just what you're doing. Tell that's going to be too much glue right there. Make sure it's flat on the edge. Squish that glue in case it still needs to come out of the edge there. Okay. Should have cleaned my bone folder. Carefully work this in. Just kind of stretching that binding out, the book, right in that little quarter inch and, and book width area. You want 
the book should be able to work. I'll come over here and do the same thing. You're just working your paper, stretching out the fibers. We could all use a good stretch now and then. Let your fibers stretch. Okay. Sure don't like that on the back. I don't like it. It's okay, Ange. It's okay. Okay. Now is the time to make sure there's absolutely no glue on your hands. And uh, let's just take a look at this. Make sure it's going to fit. Make sure our... Oh, look at that. Oh, my. It has its eighth of an inch there. Do you believe it? <laughs> Hard to believe, isn't it? But that's how it works. You subtract and subtract and add. So, oh my goodness, it's going to be so beautiful. I can't wait to do the cover. When we do the cover, we'll actually put something around the book so we don't uh, cause it any harm. Wow, oh, look at that. So the next step is going to be putting this spine in here and then glue in your end papers where they belong. It's a matter of getting that book in the right place. And then we're, we'll put um, decorative paper on the inside, of course. Of course, of course. Look at that. We are going to have a regular, old-fashioned journal. Okay, so I'm going to let you go for right now. Um, the one thing you're going to want to make sure we do is when we put this book in, we put top with top, so we're not upside down. I guess it doesn't matter now because the book is white, top and bottom, so whichever one you choose. It needs to be worked, but it will be able to do that, too. Okay, well... I am going to let you go for now, and um, let's just take a quick look at some of the rice papers. See, I would kind of like to put that on there, but she's, it's too big, and I think the bird is too big, yes, but I have, where did the other ones go? Oh dear, I hope my dog didn't take it. I guess I can't blame her for everything, but it could try. This. Look at that. Wouldn't that be pretty? Oh my, what's that? Oh, it's just a wrinkle. It's a wrinkle in time. So I'm thinking about maybe this on the cover. I wonder how it would, would be for a book cover. Because if I'm going to use that, we might put that part on next so that we can bring all this stuff in. I just wonder, you know, so we can wrap the, the corners and stuff. I wonder how strong it is. You know, um, you know how strong it is when it gets attached to a book and glued down. 
I don't know. It might not work as a, a good cover. Might have to do it in, in sections. Okay, well let me think about that. And um, I will get back to you on the next video. I know this takes time. And today we've covered our book. And next one we are going to glue our end pages in and decorate the cover and the inside. And then we'll be completely done. So next video will be the last one on this book, I believe. And then you can go off and make hundreds of your own and sell them like crazy. How's that sound? Pretty good to me. So anyway, I hope you have a good, e good afternoon. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. If you would like to take a nap today because it's a holiday weekend, I wish you sweet dreams. So, I'd like to take a nap. I got up at 2. But that's about my usual, between 2 and 4. So, alrighty. I hope you have a good day. Thank you for joining me. Welcome to all my new subscribers and welcome to my subbies and Thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone. I will talk to you soon. Bye for now.